Notice hums, clouds roll, through the fields flow silver waves, songs of silver grass. This was the first poem I wrote for myself, and it was part of my way of getting through the loneliness of quarantine. But it also helped rid me of an addiction that had subtly gotten worse and worse over the years. Two years ago, when Switzerland had to go into an extended quarantine, I wasn't too worried. Digital media was going to be my savior. It was going to keep my boredom at bay, it was going to keep me connected to my friends, and it was going to help me maintain connections during quarantine. I imagined that digital media would dissolve the walls of my room and project me into the world outside as if quarantine didn't exist at all. But sadly, that didn't happen. Instead, I got very addicted. And rather than talking to my friends or doing projects over the internet, I was spending time consuming content. The time I spent in front of a screen gradually increased. The time I spent playing video games and scrolling through social media stretched from two hours a day to four, then to eight, and very soon it consumed my day entirely. During every single crevice of my routine, eating, using the bathroom, brushing my teeth, I was also looking at my phone. I'd go down these YouTube rabbit holes, starting with a simple comedy skit, and 10 hours later, I'd find myself watching a two-hour-long video about the conspiracies surrounding cryptozoology. Slowly, I lost contact with my friends, and there were even days where I barely spoke to my parents at all. Keep in mind, this was during a time when we were confined to the same apartment, barely being more than 30 meters apart. I'd completely lost control of my own time. But this is how most digital media is built. It's designed to keep our attention for as long as it can, so that our eyes brush over as many ads as possible. Since most services on the internet are free, we're paying with our time, with our attention, and with our data. Every time you visit a website or click on a link or watch a video, you're giving out these tidbits of information, clues about what we like and what we don't. These clues are then compiled and used to feed us content that keeps us interesting, interested for longer. And it works. TikTok is an app specifically designed around this model, and it's now the most used app in the world. In case you don't know, the way TikTok works is it feeds you these 10 to 20 second long videos and very quickly learns what keeps us entertained. It's incredibly easy to use, it has an unending stream of content, and it's very, very addictive. Luckily, there is a lifeline that helped pull me out of my cycle of media addiction. And that lifeline is the creative arts, and more specifically for me, poetry. It's a passion that started with just a short collection of poetry that my English teacher recommended to me, and that led to me writing down those three lines that I read to you earlier. Poetry engaged my imagination, and it made me feel a sense of nostalgia, something that was very different from anything I'd experienced online. It was like the yin to the internet's yang. The poem I read to you earlier was a haiku, and it was the only type of poem I wrote in the beginning. Haikus were short and simple, three lines and 17 syllables. I like to think of them as the TikToks of poetry. And they're what allowed me to make an otherwise very difficult transition a lot easier. See, our interactions with digital media are often very one-sided. It almost always goes like this. The internet provides the content, and we consume it. When you're reading an article or scrolling through posts or watching a video, there's often very little contribution that you're making yourself, and there's very minimal critical thinking you have to do. It's almost like an information injection directly into our brains. And our brains are incredibly adaptive. They will change based on our specific circumstances to work optimally in those circumstances. So when I was watching thousands upon thousands of TikToks for hours on end, my brain was still adapting, just not in a way that was healthy. My attention span was minuscule, especially when it came to writing. 
and I didn't feel creative at all. There was no chance I was going to jump right into the deep end and start writing longer poems right off the bat, so haikus were perfect. I started off by just writing one a day, and very quickly I was writing five or six. Haikus saved me from the isolation of quarantine the way I had wished that digital media would. They brought me to places I'd been, places I'd loved. My grandparents' farmhouse, or the beach near my childhood home, or the forest I used to play in that would get covered in white flowers in spring. Poetry overall connected me to my friends and family the way I had hoped that digital media could. I wanted to share poems I loved, poems I found interesting. A poem is a great way to start a conversation, especially about something difficult. So when the sun starts setting too early and seasonal depression makes it that little bit more difficult to get out of bed, share a poem about the coldness of winter with someone and reminisce about sitting indoors with rosy cheeks, trying to heat up your hands on a hot cup of chocolate. Poetry got me through a lot of difficult times, not only because it made me feel better in the moment, but because it acted as a bridge to others through which I could share the things that worried me, the things that brought me joy, and the things I found important. Most of all, poetry helped me appreciate the things worth appreciating. It was almost like a journal. I try to remember something important that happened to me and write down what made it important, what made it stand out. It taught me how to reflect on what really mattered to me. Which experiences was I proud of and which ones should I learn from? In order to write poetry, I had to take a magnifying glass to myself and think, who am I and what do I really want to write about? Recently, when I was writing poetry in my mother tongue Finnish, I came across a word that I think, I was reintroduced to a word that I think summarizes the difference between digital media and the creative arts very well. And that word is lasna, which translates to the state of being present. But it means much more than that. If you're a lasna, you're able to appreciate your experiences. You're able to enjoy yourself in the moment. And you're an active part of everything that's happening around you. So when digital media pulls us away from our interests, when it isolates us from our friends and family, and when it eats away at our time. The creative arts are what bring us back, and they are what allow us to once again be lesna. Thank you.